Hey guys, I haven't been making videos lately because I've been pretty busy at work, but um, I guess with this new coronavirus, things have slowed down quite a bit. So um, today what I'm going to be doing is um, I have a, a part that we were trying to get manufactured and I sent it out to a place to give us a... Anyway, their manufacturing people came back and said that they couldn't make it because they thought it was a five axis part. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make that part today. Um, using my three axis mill just to show that it can be done. Um, it was a part that would be machined out of steel, but um, I'm going to be making it out of wood. I did all the cam last night and um, got everything programmed. I'm about to get it going here. All right, this is the part we're making today. I want to just show you this real quick. So it's a 3D part, it's got contour in one direction, uh, but it's a two-sided machining. I think that was one of the biggest reasons why they were assuming they needed a five-axis mill to make this. So the way I'm going to set this up, so you can kind of see the, what's going on here with this part. This is flat, this flange down here is also flat, and then there, all this little ramp here is bent. This represents like the tabletop of my milling machine. I drilled four holes in it and those are going to be locating pins, holes for the starting material. Since this is a two side um, machining, what I'm going to do is locate the starting block using those and then mill into it and then that way I could turn it around and flip it over without relocating the part or having to reset up the machine. So let me get out of here real quick. I'm going to go into the manufacturing workbench. All right, so the first thing I do is in this setup, I machine the holes into my table. All right, I just got an MDF surface on the top. I'm gonna to drill these holes in, and I've figured out exactly how big they need to be to accommodate the dowel pins. Okay, then I take my starting block and I locate it in the nearly the same location. Then I come in and drill four holes in it. Now, it really doesn't matter if it's exactly where it needs to be or not. The Like drilling these holes in the starting blank establishes a relationship between my tabletop and the, and the part. And so it doesn't need to be exact as long as these use the mechanical accuracy of your um, machine to establish the holes in the table and the holes in here. And they'll press together. As long as you have enough excess, it'll cut around it. Okay, so this is kind of weird because I did this upside down first, but I want to show you if this is my starting material, this little transparent box, this bottom left hand forward corner, Z axis is going up, X axis is the short axis on my table, Y axis is the long axis. Okay, so I'll basically come in here and do this milling operation to cut these ramps in. Just This is just a rough pass. Then I come in and do a like a really fine finishing pass. I think I, I remove 0.1 inches of material with a ball end mill. And I use really tight um, step over so the surface finish comes out great. I'm going to show you how close together these are. I mean, they're like... 0 0.015 inches apart so very small okay then once I get done with that you can see that this axis that was down here in this corner is now over here on the second setup okay so I'm gonna turn it around and I'll show you exactly using this package okay so now on the opposite side I have the same axis system where this bottom left hand corner in this orientation Z is up X is the short distance on my table Y is the long distance okay so that basically allows me to go and flip this part over and because those dowel holes are precisely located with where the machine thinks they need to be relative to the table that it'll locate these and I'll be able to go on with the cut and it'll match up my bottom side with the top side okay so the next mill operation is a rough cut to the top or the bottom and then I do another pass with, with the ball end mill just to clean everything up at the end. Then I come out back with a square end mill and cut this out. Now I put, I use the periphery of the part as a projection that I used for this um, for this 2D uh, pocket or no 2D we call it contour and then I put tabs in here and the tabs go all the way through the thickness of the part and so that way you'll basically have like a little piece of material stuck here the machine will step over that area so it'll pretty much be carved out on both sides except it'll step over this this location this location this location and this location and because of the way I did this it's gonna be milling air for almost the entire operation but that's all right it has to go through the full thickness of the part and so It'll start, it'll cut this top area first and then it'll kind of work its way around. And at the end, I'll have this part that's kind of suspended in the material held on by tooling tabs. So if you can imagine.
So this right here shows the dowels. Um, they're located in holes in the table here, here, there, and there. Another thing these provide is they take up kind of the shear that you're getting from the machine, like roughing through the material so that it doesn't stop, start rocking around and give you some like mechanical, you know, deviation just from the stock moving around and it'll help to keep it located. Okay, so this is the finished top of the part. Man, this surface finish is really, really good. It's super smooth. I mean, I'm probably gonna need to do just a little bit of light sanding, but not much. The tool path resolution for the ball mill is very, very small. So the passes are really close, so it doesn't leave much at all. It roughed out these holes here for fasteners. Uh, there's one right here on the uh, this little bracket and then this ramp here. It goes all the way down to the edge here. And also so these are symmetric so that when I, I could take this part off, turn it over and pick up the same dowel hole locations and um, you know, it'll pretty much give me the same setup. That way I won't have any like X or Y mismatches. So the parts like really located properly. Okay, I found a problem. I have this little rosette that I made on my table just to kind of make it quick to line stuff up relative to one of my tool fixtures. And I guess my stock may be a little bit out of square, so one of the corners is hitting this thing. But this kind of illustrates the reason why you need to use dowel pens because it um, basically creates a new axis system that isn't based on the part geometry, but features that you establish with the CNC mach machine. And so the, the holes are close tolerance located relative to the machine in the same setup. So if your material's a little out of whack. Like if I tried to float this in with, um, you know, like some kind of indicator or whatever, it would be picking up an edge of your part. And if your part is not perfectly sized and perfectly square, it'll induce error. So the way I did it this way, what it does is it uses the mechanical accuracy of the machine to est establish X, Y, and Z coordinate. Okay, so what I wound up doing was just loosen these bolts and I took these drywall screws out here that's securing this down. And this thing it wiggles around enough that I was able to get enough clearance to make it so that this part could slide down on those pins. So, so it's located now relative to where the machine thinks it is. Everything's engaged. I need to go back through here and make sure I have a good fit up to the table and then I'm gonna start the G-code again.
right, I got it all cut out here. You can see cut the boundary all the way around the part. Looks like it cut through pretty good. I'm not exactly sure what's going on down here, but it's kind of hard to see. Um, so if you're following along, the, the roughing cut kind of just hogs out all this material here. And then the, um, the ball mill came afterwards and he even put these little fastener holes in. I'll go ahead and open these up later. But uh, the part is pretty, I mean, I have a tab right here and one right here. And so this, I'm not getting hardly any deflection there. And so I'm gonna go ahead and move this mill out of the way. And then I'll push it down. I'll take this out. Okay, so this is how it turned out. You can see very good surface texture on the primary part. Um, the other side, I got a little blowout here. Uh, I'm using an upcut bit and I'm hoping most of this will clean out. I mean, this is wood, you know what I'm saying? It's uh, the fibers, they tend to peel out. There's a little bit of area where it's doing that, but I should be able to dress them up on a sander kind of nice. And I think overall, I'm pretty happy with it. All right, so I'm just gonna cut these tabs off here with a little handsaw. Um, if I was doing this on a metal part, you might want to be using a bandsaw or a grinder and then just go back and dress some of the edges up. All right, I got this part dressed up. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So it's got compound curvature in this direction and this little flange here pops out. I mean, this wants to be a sheet metal part, but if you wound up in a situation where you needed to machine it, this is what, you, what it would look like. And um, like I said, because it had the compound coverage to it, the machine shop just thought that it needed to be a five axis part and they were saying they couldn't do it, but I think it's a lot of it is nesting. Make sure you have a draft angle and um, you don't have any tool trapment issues. Also, if you have a flat face like these two, um, you could use that as your parallel surface to kind of index off of. Anyway, that's what it looks like. It's kind of neat. I went ahead and opened these holes up with the drill press. They look pretty good for wood. Um, what's really interesting is how Good the surface finish feels. Those um, ball end mills really do a good job of keeping everything smooth. If I put finish on here, it would be very shiny. You can see it's hard to really see how it feels, but anyway, neat little project. Like I said, uh, we're all staying home because of this coronavirus thing, and so um, it's kind of good to get out of the house, keep your mind busy, uh, go make something in your garage, walk around your neighborhood, yep, keep active. Uh,